This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. On the morning of February 5, 2003, Colin Powell took his seat at the large curved table of the United Nations Security Council. He had been tasked by President George W. Bush to prosecute Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein in the court of world opinion. This is an important day, Powell announced, for us all. The American Secretary of State's highly anticipated presentation marked the zenith of his extraordinary 40-year career in government service. It was as if he had been preparing for the moment all of his life. According to the Bush administration, Saddam Hussein represented a clear and present danger to the security of the United States, a danger so ominous that it warranted an internationally televised evidentiary hearing. The president had allotted Powell less than a week to prepare a comprehensive case meant to justify preventive warfare and the overthrow of a foreign government. Powell was up to Bush's challenge. The secretary was the perfect person to assemble and present the case against Iraq. Effective prosecutors must have credibility and ability, and the retired four-star Army general possessed both in spades. Having served successfully as the senior military assistant to Defense Secretary Caspar Weinberger, as National Security Advisor to President Ronald Reagan, and as Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for Presidents George H.W. Bush and Bill Clinton, Powell's experience in international security affairs was exceptional. Moreover, by 2003, the Secretary of State's reputation for trustworthiness at home and abroad was unparalleled, far exceeding that of President Bush and all other senior advisors, including Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, and Condoleezza Rice. Powell's stature and popularity had been forged during the 1990-1991 Persian Gulf War, when, as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, he earned a reputation as an articulate, trustworthy, and decisive warrior leader. A decade later, in the aftermath of the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, Secretary of State Powell, more than any other principal of a hawkish National Security Council, was perceived as the least likely to exaggerate the threat posed by Saddam Hussein. In January 2003, when Bush instructed Powell to prepare the brief against Iraq at the United Nations, he told the secretary, We've really got to make the case, and I want you to make it. You have the credibility to do this. Maybe they'll believe you. Powell's sterling reputation was matched by his capacity to construct and deliver persuasive and compelling briefings. Acutely aware that his and the president's credibility would be at stake, the secretary and his staff worked assiduously with the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, and the White House to craft a cogent, non-politicized, fact-based presentation that exposed the Iraqi danger. Inherently cautious, Powell sought to draw only incontrovertible conclusions from solid evidence and to discard questionable intelligence that seemed a stretch or wasn't multi-sourced. Powell's first decision was to reject a White House proposal for a three-day U.N. presentation that dissected Iraq's nexus with terrorists, its record of human rights violations, and its weapons of mass destruction, WMD, programs. Instead, Powell insisted on a succinct, 90-minute presentation that focused predominantly on WMD. He and CIA Director George Tenet also rejected a WMD report prepared by Vice President Cheney's office. Powell and Tenet concluded that Cheney's contrived document contained numerous unsubstantiated claims that rendered it a disaster, worthless, incoherent, and unusable. In the end, Powell's presentation relied extensively on the October 2002 National Intelligence Estimate, NIE, regarding Iraq's continuing programs for weapons of mass destruction. CIA officer Michael Morell, who assisted Powell in the intelligence vetting process, marveled at the Secretary's rigorous, systematic approach to building the prosecutorial case against Iraq.